Hi, so this is one of my training for BTEF series videos. Um, this one is on the part of the syllabus that is about stable design and fitting. So I just thought I would run through what the design of my stables are here, um, the advantages of different things, disadvantages, etc., and what the other options are. Um, so obviously we're in an indoor barn here. Really nice because it protects you from all the elements. However, you've got the added problem of less circulation, um, so we have lots of vents that we leave open and four big doors that we leave open to increase the circulation. Um, luckily it's quite open, it's high roof, so that's quite good. Um, but outdoor stables are better for ventilation generally. Um, so to start with the stables, this is the design of all of ours. So they've got um, a V-shaped hole for their head. So this stops them weaving, um, which is really good. Um, Obviously, it's not an ideal design for smaller horses because it's quite a high bar. So there's a pony here and he has to slightly stretch to get over it. Um, so this wouldn't be ideal if you had a load of ponies. It also has these um, attachments on so you can close it up completely. Say if you have a very badly behaved horse or something. It's not something I'm keen to do because I like them to be able to stick their heads out, see the other horses. Um, so our doors are sliding ones. Um, again, I quite like because you only have to open it a little bit for yourself to get in and out. The horse can't get out of that. Um, so rather than a swinging one, and it also means it won't ever swing back on the horse. Um, outside the stable, I have one of these like bridle hooks on every outside every stable. So. It's just a really small thing, but it's really handy. You can hang your head, head collars, lead rope, bridle on. Um, and I have a, just a basic hook up here, um, which I currently use to hold my rugs on uh, and my hoof picks. Um, long term, I'll be getting rug racks to go outside the door. I think that's smarter, that's easier. Um, and so yeah, that's my plan. Um, over here, we also have their feeders. So this is really good on a, big barn for a big barn um, it's a lot easier to feed you can chuck the feed in chuck the water in spin it um, it means your buckets don't get trashed they don't get filthy however um, they're harder to clean out and you quite want to encourage the horse to eat from the ground um, and obviously you don't with this so there are the disadvantages but I think for bigger yards this is really helpful Inside my stables, I have automatic waterers in all of them, um, so that's really good. Again, for the size of the yard, it's really helpful. If I was filling up, at the moment it's 12, if I was filling up 12 buckets twice a day, every day, it would be pretty exhausting, be quite time consuming. However, disadvantage is you can't track how much the horse is drinking. Um, you have to be careful of that. It is quite nice. Um, that when you have proper buckets you can see if they're drinking, how much they're drinking, if they're doing anything weird with their water. Um, so that's just something to be aware of if you have automatic waterers, also you need to make sure you keep them clean. Um, we also have rubber matting on the floor. Um, this is Quattro sealed rubber matting. Um, I couldn't recommend this enough. Um, I've had um, stables that are just concrete floors and stables we've just put down rubber matting before and I find this the easiest. Um, it means you don't have to bed up as much um, and because the horses can't scratch themselves on concrete. Um, some of my stables have rubber matting on the walls. This is for the bigger horses that are likely to knock themselves. Um, all of the stables have a tie-up ring at the back. Um, it's a really good feature to have in the stable, however it's one of the things I don't like about the stable. I don't like the idea of tying up the horse at the back because if you're then coming in, you're coming in straight towards their back end and they can't really see you. Um, so this is a good place to feed hay nets from if that's what you want to do. I actually feed all of my hay on the ground. Um, this is because it's more natural, they eat and they drink from higher up so I want them to be eating their hay from the ground. Um, it clears their chest and everything. I, I put up baler twine around the bars so I can tie up at the front. And a couple of horses here do need hay nets so I can tie up baler twine to the top 
and hang hay nuts from there, so that's really good. Um, so in all my stables, I use shavings. Um, this is partly I don't have the storage for straw, um, and I prefer the cleanliness um, of them and the fact that they're less dusty. However, in some places, you might only be able to use straw. In some places, it's much easier and cheaper to use straw if you've got the storage. Um, the ideal size of a stable would be 12 foot by 12 foot. So these are a little bit, bit small. These are 10 by 11. Um, so yeah, these are a bit smaller than I would particularly love, but they work, they're big enough for the horses. Um, when you're thinking about stable design, you want to think about the safety, number one priority. Um, are there any dangers? Are there any risks to your horse in the stable? Um, if, your horse, if it is a small stable and it's a horse that might get cast, they either need big banks or anti-casting strips. Um, so if they get cast, they have something to push off of. In an ideal world, um, it would be really good to have a fold-out saddle rack here, um, just to put my saddles on if I'm tacking up while I'm getting the horse groomed, that type of thing. Another thing that some stables have which are really good is a hay rack. Um, so you put your hay in that rather than on the floor, so it's natural and there's not much mess, which is really good. Um, and then when you're thinking about stables, you also want to make sure they're well lit. So these all have a hanging light um, above each stable. So that's really good because you obviously, you want light in each stable when it's dark. Um, so really important, particularly in old barns and old stables where it's a bit darker, maybe the roof's lower. Um, like, like good lighting is really important. Uh, particularly if you're going to be off out competing, leaving early in the morning. Um, and then when you're thinking about your stable design um, and stable fittings, you also want to think of, do you have anywhere you can put a horse, like isolate a horse? Um, so we have boxes on the other side where I could isolate in, um, but that's always something to consider. Um, and then finally, I'd say another big consideration is where you put your muck heap in comparison to your yards. This is slightly slightly off topic, but you don't want to be downwind from your muck heap because then it will mean you get lots of flies on your yard. Um, so yeah, that's just a little bit of an overview on stable design, stable fittings. What I would recommend is you go out to your own stable, have a look at that, see the pros, the cons, what's good, does it have windows, is the ventilation good? Um, how does it eat, drink, etc. Like all of the safety features, all of the how natural is this for my horse? Um, and do it, do this as many different places as you can. So if you can go like online and look at other people's yards and analyze their stables, um, that's a really good way to think about this. In the B test, um, the most likely way that they'll bring about this is they'll look at the stable that you're at. Uh, which will obviously be wherever your test center is and they'll ask you to talk about it so that's why thinking like analyzing other people's stables is really good you want to find positives as well as negatives you don't want to be all negative um, but you want to find a couple of things that you would change but always find a solution so I would have in the back of my head two good two things two good things two bad things um, and try you can normally work them around so if you think water um, tie up, ventilation, um, and door, for example. If you have those four things that you know you can always find something to comment on, um, then it will make it really easy and make it really quick in, in the test. Um, it stops you having a bit of a panic moment. Um, yeah, so that's my best advice is look as much as you can. If you have any questions, ping me a message. There's lots on the Pony Club website, so have a look there. Uh, yeah, I hope this has been helpful.